Hello and welcome to your Living a Course in Miracles call. My name is Jared Krebs. I'm here in San Antonio, Texas. Today is April 30th, 2021, and we are honored to have a special guest speaker with us tonight. Her name is Sue Ann Okerwald Knobloch. She is a dear friend of mine, and I am so glad that you are here, Sue Ann. Thank you for being here. Oh, wait, we have to unmute you. Sorry. There I am. There, there we am. go. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jared, for having me on here. And like the first thing everybody should put in the comments, like claps and stuff, because Jared does so much and I'm just so honored to know him. And um, he's let me have like a platform here. I mean, not only like if you all watch my videos and stuff, it's like, you know, um, it's like a safe haven. And if, if y'all don't come here and, and check out these Friday nights, um, it's just really amazing because um, it's not only a really nice Facebook page, it's very kind. Um, it is kind of a haven. We've all seen like some craziness is going on other places, right? And, um, but so, you know, uh, and, and Jared, I mean, how many years have you been doing it? Like five years, seven years? It's been a lot yeah, of years. Yeah, it's been like five years maybe, or four or five. I have to go back and look. Now Christian goes and finds our, our, our flashback Fridays and throwback Thursdays. And it's like so funny. So thank you, Christian, for doing that. Um, and uh, thank you for your acknowledgement, Sue Ann. It's very nice. I really appreciate your kind words. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a labor of love, right? I mean, this is the uh, most important thing to me is, is the Course in Miracles, A Course in Miracles, and doing all my forgiveness lessons. And I know that everybody here is like-minded, right? Like we all are on that same path. And today we want to know, I mean, I know that you have some things you want to walk us through with the true forgiveness process, but also like, could you tell us a little bit about your story, like how you found the course and how you came to understand it and just a little bit of background in case somebody doesn't know your, your full story. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> That's exactly on the menu. <laughs> oh, great. Great, great. And the other thing I want to tell you too, what, what's really cool about the uh, Zooms when they are covered, uh, whatever the material is for that night, you know, that uh, Jared has always done uh, forgiveness in the field. That's been like a huge part of this. And, you know, so um, that's basically what I'm going to talk about tonight, because like forgiveness seems to be like the meat and potatoes of the course. And it, it it's really like tonight, we're just going to talk about stories. And I'm going to tell you some stories about myself. I'm going to tell you some stories about all of us as a whole, as a one sonship. And like, how does this all fit together? This beautiful book <laughs> that I think was written in 1979 or 78 or something like that. You know, how does this all, it took actually more years than that, if people know the all behind the scenes, but you know, how does this all like interlock into like this one whole thought system? And, you know, it said that uh, one of the lines is, you know, uh, believe all this course or not at all, you know? And if you hear me quote, sometimes I'm like a little off in a couple of words or whatever, because I'm a horrible memorizer. Um, I was a horrible workbook student. <laughs> and so the point is, is the darned experience on the other end. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. Like, how does, how, what are these two thought systems? What are we? How do we get here? You know, why do we even care about forgiveness? Like, what's the payoff? I mean, Jesus knows that we don't want to just like go to him. Oh, I'm just going to go to him and think with him. And, you know, he really knows that like we're stubborn and we want to stay you, you know, humans. And like, we maybe want to bring him here, you know, but we're, we're not like wanting to just be not ourselves and just completely be in oneness of abstract thought. So we're like in this conundrum. And so he knows that the only way you can really get us is like, we have to know there's a payoff on the other end. <clears throat> and um, I'll tell you why I have a funny voice, you know, like why, how, how my voice is, how I speak and how it didn't matter. And why I was supposed to talk and all kinds of crazy stuff, right? And of course, how I do the uh, how I do the forgiveness process, why I what I found about the parts of it um, that like many many people do it very similarly, and we'll go over that. But like, what are the main um, takeaways as to these parts that you almost like have to do? And when you skip one of them, the darn thing doesn't work, and you don't get the payoff. And a lot of people stay stuck for a lot of years, wondering like, why is it that they're not feeling any different? you know, and, and making that, that big change. So um, the first funny thing I got to tell you is this, so, and like, and, oh, I always say, the first thing I always have to say is I'm not enlightened. You know, people are always like, oh my God, we heard someone say they were enlightened, you know, and like, and now everybody has to like, check them out, you know, and sort of test them, you know. And, um, but, and the whole purpose behind that and why I speak is because I'm on the path 
to that. We are all on the path to that. So when Holy Spirit asked me to begin to speak, and this is only about seven or eight months ago, um, I'd already been doing the forgiveness process for about four and a half years or something, right? And some of my friends, including Jared, like have seen me like at like my worst, like the ego. And so I'm going to tell you how we flip back and forth between these two thought systems. So depending on what day you get me on or what's going on, you, you might see more like hatefulness. Now, I do tend to not post like that. <laughs> you know, and, and this is what we're working with. And it's nothing to be ashamed about. It's nothing to be upset about. In fact, you will find it's the actual keys that open the lock. And then you will begin to like when, when things are sort of like negative when, and when these things bubble up. Because that's what they do. They bubble up and you have like no choice and they come. So literally yesterday, I was like super sad. I was forgiving like a really big thing. And I had like these doubts. And the ego loves those doubts. It, it's, like, it's like saying, you know, you, you can't speak. You can't talk. You know, you can only do it if you're enlightened. You know, you're no good. You know, it loves to like stew and all that, right? So then that was the very thing that I took and um, did forgiveness on. And then that completely like changed. So it changes 180 degrees and you completely go into a different thought system. And so I'm going to tell you about that. Um, so I'm debating which one to talk about me. I, I think I'll first I'll talk about like my, my little story. Um, and like I said, we're talking about stories because that's all it is. None of this is happening. None of us are here. You may see like a personality here. A, a person that's actually sitting on a chair, you know, with this glass block back here, but um, nothing is really happening. And um, that cannot be said enough. You know, I still need that dr drilled into my mind all the time. <clears throat> and so um, Jesus and Holy Spirit works very intimately and close, closely with me all the time to show me these things. And I will show you how you do the same exact thing. I'm no different. I'm just a housewife. I have a 40 hour week job nothing special, nothing special. And so we all come to this, you know, um, in our time. So, and we have to hear a lot of these things many times. So anyway, um, so yes, and I know um, Sheila was talking about her story. I was like, wow, that's like kind of a ditto of mine. So um, I first got the books in um, 1987, 88, 89. It's really hard to exactly remember. Um, cause nobody writes that down, you know, <clears throat> and then the book says it's a certain date and I have those old ones that don't have all the nice little, um, you know, a page, oh, they have page numbers, but they don't, they're not annotated or whatever we call it that, that, uh, Ken Watnick then did later, <coughs> excuse me, in the, in the later version. So anyway, um, and so I have been on what, uh, I, okay, I'll also tell you that I'm, I'm a huge believer in like three tenets of the course that I found that are really, really super important in order to do the true forgiveness process. So you're going to he hear me speak that way. So it's sort of like a, um, a spoiler alert <laughs> because um, I don't do course light, <laughs> I don't like Bud Light, right? You know, I like, I need to get to the very, very bottom because I'm always teaching myself. Everyone is always, always teaching themselves. There's no one out there. So I'm teaching myself what I want to learn. And you see all that's beautifully laid out, like in, in uh, page one, introduction of manual for teachers. And then it just goes on. It's just so beautiful all up in there. But so, um, like I said, I'm teaching, teaching myself what I want to learn. And so the three big tenets, and you know, I did like some videos on this before this even came up. So one is um, uh, there is no world. The script is written and ideas leave not their source. So given that like little precursor, um, you will know that um, I really follow Gary Renard and all his books uh, and Ken Wapnick and the course and Holy Spirit and Jesus. And it's kind of like the only ones I, I rarely uh, listen to anyone else. And that doesn't mean that that's not great and awesome for other people. <clears throat> and what, what I found is I just really need to get to the very, very bottom. So uh, the reason why I say that is because, you know, in Gary's book, it books, it talks about uh, the uh, spiritual buffet line. <clears throat> so I was definitely on that spiritual buffet, buffet line. And this was really, really early. So like, I'm thinking I uh, started getting some of this. Stuff. I was like 25, 26, 27. Um, and so before that, I came down to San Antonio and I was reading a lot of things, right? And um, I really just knew, so I, I always talked to Jesus and I just kept, somehow uh, was not feeling, um, feeling it through religion. And um, I would be so surprised at the beautiful things that were said in the pulpit. And then we would get down to the, um, 
uh, the coffee hour and everybody's like backstabbing. <laughs> Like I'd be like eight or 10. I'd be like, this is not making sense. Anyway, so <clears throat> when I came down to San Antonio, I uh, had a, a girlfriend who was a massage therapist and I'd sought, sought that out. And it uh, turned out she had the exact same birthday to the day and year as my mother, which is very interesting. And I was not very good friends with my mother, but I was very good close friends with this person. <clears throat> June 30th, uh, no, sorry, June 11th, 1930. Anyway, so I'm with her in the spiritual bookstore and you know how they're all like those beautiful books of like rainbows and um, angels and they're trying to attract us and, 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 and you buy them and they're, they're beautiful and they're very, very helpful, right? And then there was like these boring blue ones, you know, like, like how much more boring? It looks like the Bible, right? You know, and you're like, I don't know if I want the Bible, you know? So anyway, so um, there were three of them sitting there because back then they were hardcover and they were all separated out. And uh, so I asked my friend, like, what the heck is this, you know? And she said, that those that had been reading that were finding they needed nothing else. And I was like, ooh, you know, that was like a huge, huge statement to me that um, like, wow, I had, to, I had to buy them. And then uh, just like our before party where we were just talking, Sheila was mentioning how that, <clears throat> like you started reading it and I was like, what in the world? It could be written in Greek. <laughs> Gary Renard sometimes jokes about that, you know. So you, I just did not get it because I really was looking for affirmations I was looking for a lot of positive things because I was feeling so horrible, it just generally all the time, just gray, horrible, depressed. But, you know, I was like a nurse lieutenant in, in the army and you saw me doing all these things, but under it all, <clears throat> super, super unhappy. Um, and, you know, I, and I didn't know what to do about it. I didn't even really know that I wasn't happy or there was anything to do about it. So I literally read for 15 years and, you know, how it says it's a self-study course. <clears throat> so I read for 15 years. Um, there were no Zooms. There was no internet. There, there, I don't think there was even email, you know, and there were some groups you could physically go to, but I just felt never guided to do that. So 15 years, not knowing a word it said. And then I tried the workbook. I got to like, I think hundred the first time and then 30 just could not understand. I really thought that the workbook would be like a, a magical wand that would get waved over me. And um, I would just change, you know, and then I've come to find out that that is actually a thing that um, has been uh, an issue for me. And that's an issue for many people that we really want someone else to do it for us. And we really want something else to do it for us. And we're just going to wait for that to happen. And I've even found that in this teaching thing for eight months, that there, there seems to be a group within the, the course that um, feels pretty comfortable with that. You know, they're kind of kind of wait. It's either, either I already am saved, so I have nothing to do or in the future, it will happen, or don't you know we're already in heaven? So yes, it is true, and we're not here. But obviously, since we're here, and Ken Wapnick would always say, if you look in the mirror in the morning and you identify with seeing somebody there, you probably still have some work to do. You're probably still believing that you're a body to a certain extent. And it does appear that even when people become enlightened, that there's still some awareness of the body until you finally lay that body aside. So you really just can't get away from that. I think there's even a line in the course that talks about that. You can't get away from that. So anyway, so I'm reading and, and just like other people have said many, many times that we, we get uh, dispersed to the universe and it like completely changes our lives. And um, of course, um, I'd already been like hearing this intuitive thinking. In fact, I used to even do some videos on intuitive thinking. I called it intuitive living day by day. And um, it's about like hearing this inner voice. So I, I was always hearing this inner voice. So I, I heard this inner voice. And it told me to move the books over because I think I kind of was like on a downtrodden thing of it. I, you know, I put it down for like a year sometimes or three months, not to pick it back up. And it was up and down all the time. So it was off to the side. I was told to move it over in a more prominent place is the way the words went. <clears throat> so I learned to follow directions because this is actually Holy Spirit that's always been working with us for eons and eons, way before there ever was a course, always. I would say like Jesus had no Jesus to ask help from, right? You know? So how did he become enlightened without the course, you know? So there is a little bit of like, we have to know it's a tool and it is the fastest tool that I have ever found. Um, and it's the only tool that I know of that says how we got here, why we got here, what to do about it, how to leave, like the whole, the whole way. <clears throat> so that, that's like really incredible. So anyway, um, this lady, a lady came over the next day and saw my books and said, if you like that, you'll like to experience the universe. <clears throat> so many of us have had those kind of experiences where 
you know, um, so Holy Spirit will speak to us in so many different ways. And you don't even have to call it Holy Spirit. I mean, you know, it could be Allah, it could be Buddha, you know, you can use different names, um, <clears throat> but these do have meaning in society. And so we are familiar with using these spiritual type of names, but it's like a higher presence, right? You know, we've all felt it. Everybody that's on here has been feeling it, you know, otherwise you wouldn't even be here. So of course you get the book. And then, uh, so I call that first part, the first 15 years, I call that phase one. I, I just started making these things up. I mean, and then, oh God, people hate it when I make up words, you know, <clears throat> I don't know what else to call them, you know? So I, I speak from an experience, which comes at the end of this, these phases. And then I look back <clears throat> and then I have words for an experience. An experience is like wordless and speechless. It doesn't have words. So you have to somehow communicate with people with some kind of words, you know? Um, so anyway, I'm calling that phase one. And so, you know, many of us like, you know, and the time does not matter. Um, and Holy Spirit really wanted me to kind of go through these phases because um, it, it to show that time does not exist and time does not really matter. And so it could be a lifetime of reading the book and not understanding. It could be one day, <clears throat> you know, it, it really doesn't matter. It's all very personally guided. And that's the good kind of specialness is when you are guided by this inner presence that you come in, that you will come in contact with, especially through the true forgiveness process, which I'm gonna talk about. Okay, so phase two became reading Disappearance of the Universe. And you have to remember, I got it in 2004. So it was like, I was reading them as the books come out. Like people now have this beautiful thing, they can buy all four and he's got flashcards, he's got, I've got lots of stuff, right? And I'd kind of wait for them to come out. And many of y'all on the phone too know that you y'all got them a long time ago too. So I got, got his books and then that allowed me to uh, look back at the course. And um, I, can't, I can't even tell you, I probably read it four, six, eight times and even just disperse the universe, which a lot of people call DU um, several times. I can tell by the different highlighting, you know, pink and then the green and then the underline and red or whatever, you know. And the joke is that like after a while, there's no words that aren't underlined. So it's kind of like, well, you know, kind of silly, right? But anyway, um, so that allowed me to begin to, this is the best way that I can explain this. Again, words that are coming out of an experience. So um, align my beliefs with the metaphysical principles of the course. So that's that's kind of what I call phase two. Um, and it just helps our minds. We're still a brain and we're still walking around. We still have to kind of, it helps to have sort of like these demarcations or something, right? These can overlap. <clears throat> you know, you could read DU and become enlightened in one day. I don't know what your path is. My path was like another 12 years. So what, what happened, and I didn't know if I was really doing the course or not. I didn't think of any of that. But um, if you notice in the words that I use, um, that um, I aligned my beliefs. So a belief is, of course, something that can change. So, of course, that's not actually God thoughts. You know, but it's important. It's very important. So we have to understand, like, what are these metaphysical principles that are the opposite of Christianity that we've been hearing or for into Judaism? Um, and I kind of feel bad for people that do, you know, Hindu and Buddhism, because um, reading some of those types of words, you know, it's very Christian based. We know that. And, and through the people that it came through. So um, you know, we're not going to worry about that. We're not going to get into controversy over that. You know, the material itself is so, so deep and pure. Like, why worry about the words, right? So, um, but we do need to understand the metaphysical principles and align our beliefs with them in some way. Um, so like I said, I call that phase two. So then phase three I, I'm calling is when you actually start to do um, the true forgiveness process. And um, again, I kind of named it that a lot. Some people have very similar word wording to it. You know, um, I had heard, I played with advanced, the word advanced, then that kind of sounded like hoity-toity or something, you know? advanced rather than somebody who's not doing it, you know, and you don't want to feel like you're judging or people like if you're trying to speak to someone, then you don't want them to feel, you know, that they are being put down or something. Right. So, then, okay, well, I'm going to use the word true because I even heard some other people using that um, versus just regular. I don't know. <laughs> or you don't have a word, just forgiveness, you know, like forgiveness of the world. Right. Um, in the world, I should say. And um, then I began to call it a process because it seemed to have these steps. So I thought, well, shoot, if I talk about it being a process, then people would be like, oh, there's kind of this process, you know, and, uh, you know, and I'll do like these little steps. So um, that's kind of how those words came about. And um, 
I do not have a patent on them. They're not copyrighted, you know, call it anything you want, right? And I also think it's really super beautiful that um, some really good friends like uh, Mark Palmer one time, if you search him up, he did like a really good list of all sorts of ways um, in little short paragraphs that people do this process. Um, they, they're maybe not calling it a process, but um, there's beautiful parts in the course you can use, beautiful little, um, uh, it's almost, it's very poetic. You can use a poem of your own. You can look, look at a picture, you can meditate, you could do a lot of different things. But again, like I said, I found that um, there's about five or six steps that are super important to go through. Okay, now before I do that, let me tell you how we got here. So this is gonna be like our story. So my story kind of is in phase three and then maybe phase four, if there's such a thing, where you begin to speak it out. So once you've ex accepted the atonement for yourself and when you're in Holy Spirit mind, ooh, another like Holy Spirit mind, people hate when I say that. <laughs> but anyway, when you're in this mindset, um, then you begin to speak it. Um, and it's really not you speaking, you're actually like something else. So, um, <clears throat> and it's just coming through you. So that's another phase. And if y'all know Kate Greaves, I think she's even in another phase, right? She's in some other phase. I'm like, whoa, I kind of like that phase. But anyway, so, and, but as you go along, you begin to not care where you are. You really don't, you're not like, okay, let's see, am I about to be enlightened? You know, is it this life? Is it next life? You, you begin to not really care because it feels so good. And you actually look forward to yucky days, yucky days like yesterday when you're sad all day, you know, because that's the meat and potatoes. Oh, good. I can, I can get back into Holy Spirit mind. And I can undo another little bit of all this yuck that's been pressed down and I hadn't looked at in eons. It's like junk in the closet. It's moldering. It's disgusting up in there. And I actually have to look at it. I know we don't want to look at it, but we got to look at it. <laughs> so that's the only way. <clears throat> because like I said, we cannot go straight to the light. So, um, and y'all know the story from the book. This is the story of us. So of course, we are still at home in God. A oneness joined as one, right? And we never left, but there appeared to be a part that thought of a different idea and said, what if I went off on my own? And what if I thought thoughts beyond God? I'm kind of tired of thinking that, Ken Wapping will talk about this. I'm tired of thinking thoughts with God. You know, he's kind of my taskmaster. You know, I want to think something different. I want to have my own thoughts. I want to have my own kingdom. <clears throat> so, you know, these words and these ideas and these concepts are just concepts. Of, of a thought that actually didn't happen. It's impossible for that to happen because it's impossible for a piece of God to break off. Oneness is just oneness. That's the definition of it. You know, and I love that line that, you know, he is aware of what is himself and what is also himself. So we struggle with words to try to describe these experiences. But this is, this is, what, this is what we're talking about. So um, of course we're still there, but then there was this thought and in that thought, it became real. We know the tiny bad idea section. And we know that we remembered not to laugh, which means that we must have first laughed <laughs> and said, that's the silliest thing you've ever thought of. Because where would you be going? What would you be doing? You're in complete ecstasy. How you can get more? Where, where's beyond ecstasy? You know, <clears throat> and we laughed. It was so silly. But then somehow there was a belief that didn't really happen. These are unanswerable questions to the ego, <clears throat> but the ego always asks them. But of course, we believed it. And in the belief, the, the results appeared to come real. Like all of a sudden, there's solid glass back here. You know, <clears throat> I actually have a shirt on and I put this necklace on, which is always pretty whatever's, right? So, you know, all of a sudden, it, we, we believe and only because we believe and that is our escape route is because we believed it and a belief can be changed. If it actually happened, we would be absolutely screwed. <laughs> we'd be absolutely, it'd be a mess. We, there'd be no home to go to, home to, and God would have, I guess, disappeared. I, I don't know, it's impossible. So there's not, not even anything to think about. <clears throat> but luckily we just believed it is all that happened. And so then now you know that there is no world because we're, where ideas leave out their source, we're still a mind. And then this entire, so the first split that happened, <clears throat> so when, when you first split, you cannot remember what you were before. 
like, I don't know how many times people have like, you know, you're at work and then um, you go home and you're relaxing. And that's kind of hard to remember how you were at work in that mindset. So it, it's, it's similar to that. So when, when you change your mind, you do not remember where you came from. So now suddenly we're like, oh my God, like we totally messed up and I have no clue what to do. And I know my, my, the whole first part of my life, like so many years, I was just super fearful of everything. Just uh, like to talk like this in front of people like that would have been like, no way. Right. <clears throat> so the fear was so, so huge. And, and so you imagine you went from knowing everything to knowing absolutely nothing. So, and I also talk about how that in order to set up your own kingdom, you have to do complete opposite. So like if you're, if you left, um, it just popped in my mind, think about Buddha. So Siddhartha, so like he was a prince and he was living in a castle, you know, and then he actually left there to seek, to figure out why was there this suffering, you know, and I don't want suffering anymore. So if you think about it in a way, that's a great illusion, a great uh, descriptor is that he went from a castle to like absolute poorness, you know, um, of his own choice. But anyway, so you see what I mean? You have to completely go to a separate thing. Now, that does not mean that the, the, the course is asking anybody to go up on a mountain. If, if you are asked and you hear that, go up on a mountain and meditate and be that, right? <clears throat> and, but the interesting thing is it told me, no, you stay right where you are in your family, with the husband, the way it is, everything, you stay right there because this is what, this is where all your lessons are. This is it. You do not have to, in fact, you might even have less if you try to hide in a way by going somewhere and meditating, right? Or, or going on a retreat or whatever. Not to say that any of that's wrong, you know, and, um, but there are a lot in everyday life. There's a lot. There's a cornucopia of forgiveness lessons to be working with. So anyway, so we made the split and we're like, we don't remember what we were and we have like no tools. We're like totally lost. And we really believe, and, but we kind of like it. We're kind of like, mm, like we're, we're individuals now. Ooh. And we don't really want to be absorbed back into heaven. And so we're like super afraid of it. Right. So then, you know, as Ken talks about so beautifully, like, you know, like the, then the ego started talking to us, like it became our teacher and said, yeah, I got an idea. Let's have a way to to offset and put all of our guilt and all of our upsets onto something else. And that, that was the idea of how a world got made, you know, so it like completely blew out, you know, like a whole timeline, um, a whole um, mandala, whatever you want to say it, and completely went out and then it became an entire thing. And um, uh, then immediately it says God answered it. I think this is God answered. We answered. Somebody answered it again that it was super simple. Do not do that. Do not go there. Ridiculous, right? So it got, it got answered and it went away. And so it was like just, it was so minute of a time that it actually didn't, didn't happen. So what are we doing? Then? That That's why the script is written is also so important because we are actually uh, at the end of time reviewing that which has gone by as if for the first time. So again, in all of this, we're seeing that we're only a mind and we're looking at a projection and, um, and that's all we're doing. And, and we're just thinking, and there's only two thought systems. Again, that's a manual for teachers too. And I think it's on page one. So there's only two thought systems to think with. And even one of them, which is the ego thought system, isn't even real. So there's really not even any choice. <clears throat> so there goes free will, there goes planning, there goes achievements, there goes families. Like, so it's really very, very deep, very, very radical. And it is actually asking that eventually you will not um, think any of that is real. And you're gonna re-identify who you are by what you're thinking with. So I love to think of them as thought systems. I know Ken loves to think of it as um, uh, teachers. So whatever trips your trigger, <laughs> whatever helps you, to think of this. Um, and I often hold up, you see my videos, I always hold up my hands. I don't know why I started doing that, but that's kind of like ego and the Holy Thoughts, Holy Spirit thought system. So um, what the true forgiveness process does is it helps to switch from one to the other. And um, so what became our default is the ego. And so we're so unaware that, um, that we're thinking with it. And sometimes I talk about it, you know, being almost like, you know, the computer that you receive in the mail and it just has Microsoft on it and it just has Google set up as your browser. And you didn't realize, oh, there's Foxfire and there's, you know, there's other stuff, right? You could, you could even put Linux in there as your, 
you know, you could, you could put uh, Apple, you could put Apple in there, you know, whatever, you know, you could put Macintosh stuff. So, um, but we have no clue. So we're just thinking with the ego thought system. So I do have, I do have one thing in the book to read, which was the only thing that I was supposed to read. And this is really, really super interesting because it is in page, let me put my glasses on. Um, how am I doing for time, Jared? You do, you're I'm doing like, great. Uh, we, we're having some questions coming in too. So okay. we're at the halfway point, but okay. um, yeah, go ahead and read it. And then we can go to the questions. No questions yet. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. I love questions. <laughs> no, but I do have to read this. Okay. So um, chapter 30 from the new beginning beyond all idols. Okay. This is the only line I ever found in the course that is so kind and gentle to us because it talks about how um, that everything we've been doing has actually been very good and that we don't, we don't need to be down on ourselves about that we've been thinking with this ego thought system. And then I do have to go through the little steps of it, of, of, of how to do it. And then I was gonna actually do, we can even do it at the end. I was gonna do a little forgiveness process with everybody where we could all take a little individual part of our story and, and walk ourselves through it. But let me, let me first just tell you this. So this is really cool. So it, this is in paragraph four, it's uh, Roman numeral three, it's on page 631. It says, um, it is never the idol you want, but what you think it offers you, you want indeed and have the right to ask for. Like I never saw anything else like that in the rest of the course. It says, nor could it be possible it be denied. Your will to be complete is but God's will. And this is given you by being his. Okay, so what that line means is where it says, but what you think it offers you, you want indeed and have the right to ask for. So we've been asking for idols, which is the ego thought system. So we're not to be down on ourselves. Oh my God, I'm thinking with that darn thought system again, you know? And, and because what we've been asking for in that, we've been asking for completion. And in this little, you know, read, read this section because it talks about completion and it talks how we've used idols to do it. We've been trying so darn hard, like for lives and lives and lives, if you believe in reincarnation. But you know, that does not necessarily believe that. But on this long time, it seems to go on for for almost eternity, almost endless, but not quite. But you know, it seems as if we've been doing thinking with the wrong thing and. So these idols, we've been trying so hard. So the thing that we've wanted deep in our heart, that's what God listens to. And that's how we remember where we're going. So when I say Holy Spirit mind, the Holy Spirit is the highest part of ourselves. And it still has one foot in heaven. And it remembers it. This is our memory. This is our memory that we never lost. And it talks about this many lines in the book. So it, and we never forgot. And then the other foot is here. So it can hear us. So when we're like, oh my God, I lost my job or, or oh, the, the electric went out. I can't watch the TV program I wanted. Like small problems, big problems, all of them, right? It can hear all of our misery and our mayhem and our chaos. Um, and if there wasn't a way to still hear that, and I often think of like the AA program. I was around that many years early when I was, because my dad. And uh, in that, they realized that it takes a drunk to help another drunk. But it has to be a drunk that's both been sober and drunk. So like it, when you accept the atonement for yourself, now you've been the ego and you've been the Holy Spirit mind. You've been both. And so that's how you help other people to see the light within themselves. You know, and that that's, you know, I love that. You know, it just came to me as like, you know, because, and that is absolutely true. That's why in, in AA, they don't, in Alcoholics Anonymous, they do not actually ask um, like a psychologist to come run the meetings. They have closed meetings. It's only other drunks. You know, so we're all been drunk on the ego thought system, right? You know, and so the, let me just tell you the, uh, and then I'll do questions, but let me just tell you like the steps. So the first one, and this, uh, these are commonalities between everybody's process and how they do it and maybe how y'all have been doing. And, but sometimes you might find that you missed like one little thing. And so when I finally was doing it right, and then I was getting into this other mindset, which is 180 degrees, absolutely completely opposite. And you feel completely different. And you know, oh, this is different. This is different. I feel it. Something's different, you know, and you just know it. So when you do that, then you will, I forgot what to say. But anyway, so when, when, when you do that, then oh, I forgot. Ooh, it's gone. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. Let me go back to the five steps. So, so the first step is that you are going to recognize that, um, that you're upset. 
Like it seems so silly and so small, but we go around a lot of our day, you know, we're just like down and we're spiral down and, you know, and um, it's like that sore tooth that we keep wanting to touch. And, you know, um, uh, Ken has talked so much about resistance and how that um, we want to stay individuals. So this is the resistance and this is why we don't want to go right to the light. And we are resisting even knowing that we're upset, even the first step. So we have to realize that we're upset. Then we take that grievance, as it's called, a good word from the course, and we take that grievance. And what I tried, I tried many different things. I tried um, uh, looking at it from above the battlefield and seeing myself and some other people down there. Um, I tried um, uh, sitting in, in an audience and looking at a play and I'm up there with some other people. I tried you know, the movie theater and the movie happening. I try, and then the last thing that seemed to be working best for me is I try to put it in sort of a nondescript blob. It's kind of a crazy word, right? But um, with not no specifics, kind of abstract. And so, but basically, what this what this um, step does is it puts us in the decision making mind, which is actually a little phrase that Ken Ken made up. That's not in the book. It talks about the decision maker, but never says decision making mind. But this is the place I think of it almost like in a hallway, and then there's going to be like two doors. Like which door are you going to choose? Go through. But you have to get to, a, get to a place where you're separated from the problem and you're no longer in the problem. And you can tell if you're in the problem still, if you take it back, because you'll get all emotional about it. You'll get like, oh, I'm upset about it again. And you're like, oh, oh, I'm back there again. And then you may have to put it back several times, especially when you're first trying. Now, if I, for me personally, if I see specifics and I'm doing it above the battleground and I see the people, as soon as I see that person's face, I'm mad all over again. <laughs> My friends will know, they know. And, and I'm and like, you know, which comes out, you know, ah, you know, and so, um, and that's not where I want to be, you know, because it, 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 it upsets me I, and, and I'm not feeling good. And so I already identified in the beginning that I'm not feeling good and I want to do something about it. You know, and if y'all want to read, I'm not going to go into this, we definitely don't have time, but um, the rules for decision are beautiful about that. I know Kate Greaves covers that a lot. You know, and that, you know, if, if nothing else, I can at least decide that I'm not feeling good. I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but those, there's those five or six beautiful things that you go through. So it's very similar to that too. It's, it's the same, really the same. So in having it nondescript, then I quit trying to grab it back. So that was just a thing that I found helped me. <clears throat> so now all of a sudden, you know, and I used to ask Holy Spirit, please be with me. And then I realized, wow, once you're there, that, that presence is there. And then, oh my God, it seems to be me. You know, it's like a me, it's me. It's like, but I've been so out of touch with that that I, you know, but I'm, I'm just in another mindset, very abstract, like white light. So then I'm looking and, um, and then I look and it says on page, what is it? 401 in the workbook, you know, that forgiveness is still, it's quiet. It looks, the judge is not. So this is the part where you're actually completely surrendering. This is like super important. In this part where you're looking and you're just giving up, you do not bring back in like answers. So if you bring back in like, um, I just want more money, uh, you know, Jesus, show me how to have more money. Well, then right there, you already had your answer. You want more money. That's your answer. Well, what if it's not to be at this moment? Because these are other things you're going to learn so much by not having some money. You know, I don't know. I don't know what, what it is, right? So when you come with the answers, then you will not be ready to hear this completely opposite answer, which is like this very calm. Um, and it says, like, if you put words to it, it would say, dear, you're safe at home. You know, you're in oneness. You're in the heart of God. You've never left. And you're just dreaming of exile. And you're at home. And then you, you feel that. And that's the mindset. And I was always saying, then I open my eyes and then I begin to walk around my day that way. And so it's a very different uh, look. It's, it's like the first paragraph on workbook um, lesson 155, you know, where you're in the world, but not of it. And people will recognize you by the words that you say. And I've definitely seen the words are oneness. And then when you're talking ego and you will bounce back all through the day, you'll be like, boop, over here. Oh, there I go again. And then you forgive it. And it could, I found like for me now, I'm doing like four or five sometimes a day, or maybe one really big one like yesterday. And so, and as these things are coming up, so you like walk around Holy Spirit mind and oh, the dishes are still in the dishwasher. I mean, they're still in the sink. 
why didn't someone clean that up? You know, and I'm, there you are again, <clears throat> back at ego thought system. Okay. You know, and then you, you take that toy strip and then you realize <laughs> there's no dishes. Who cares if someone does it 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., right? You know, and then you, you just get a whole different perspective. And, and then you walk around again that way till the next thing comes. So this is the mind training that I'm to be talking about. You know, it for some people, it may be like it says upon death, you, we see this and then we wake up to teach it, right? Talk, talks about that in the book. Um, but for most of us, it's a slower plan. And it's Holy Spirit and Jesus intimately working with us. This is the good kind of specialist where you're specially being worked with and you're learning to hear. It talks about learning to hear and you're going to really be bad at it first and you're going to make mistakes. But who cares? The mistake is now the ego thing to learn to put the key in the hole and do this little process again. So you come out the other end. But I think the surrendering is probably the very most important because there has to be almost not, really nothing left of you because that answer is so completely different than every answer you've been looking for. So anyway, I'm going to stop with that. Oh my God. I probably talked for 45 minutes. It was awesome. <laughs> I really like how you, you covered the metaphysics of the course and also the, the steps on the true forgiveness process and um, yeah, just great content, Sue Ann. So thank you. All right. So we have our first question here, Christina. She says, dear Sue Ann, thank you for this. I was wondering if you could share about the most beautiful message the Holy Spirit has ever extended to you in your life. That I never left home. Cool. Yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all already there, you know, and, and, and also another very important thing to say <clears throat> is that when one is in Holy Spirit mind and we know we've all had that sometimes it's even like just the awe of looking at a painting, you know, when you're just like, you just don't have a body, even watching a movie, you just all of a sudden don't have a body and you're like into this other thing, you know, and, 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 and you're looking and you're in awe, you know, and, and you forget all about anything of yourself. So, and in that everyone is there. <clears throat> so sometimes people talk about like, who is the new that's talking and, you know, and it sounds like you're talking from your ego. And um, so what I also learned is that the experience. Um, so in my little story, that then doing this experience, I started to know these things, then pick back up the book and then realize that the whole time the book was only ever talking to our mind. Before that, I thought I was talking to my body and Sue Ann is a personality. <clears throat> so now I find it's, it's absolutely completely different. I know Ken talked about that too. And, and you will find, you'll, re, you'll reread it. And then everything is talking about this experience of being in that. And we could talk about words a lot, but that is probably, um, yeah, and the experience of that and, and being, you know, and so as I go along also, there's another important part is that I begin to identify as Holy Spirit. And people hate that too. Oh my God, how can you be that? You know, but ego thinks that. Ego does not like the idea that there's something better. There's, oh, you're better, this and that, whatever. No, it's all the same. There's just one thing. It's one, this is one. We're all in it, right? So in that knowing, you do become that. So you identify what you think with. And that is like a super important part, uh, point to make as well. Yes. Yeah. You, you identify what you want, right? Um, yes. a lot of times if someone wants the, um, if someone wants to be in the ego thought system, then they identify with the ego thoughts, things like that. Right. Yeah. So, like, so exactly. So like yesterday I was apparently afraid, Ken why can we talk about this too? So you become afraid to see all the light, you know, and that's why it's a slower process. And so I became afraid. And then all day long, I just kept chewing on this sadness, you know, and I could have let it go. I could have let it go in a second, you mm -hmm. know, first thing, wake up, boom, it could have been gone. But I kept hashing on it because I was afraid to let it go. Yeah. And the, what I was afraid about, it was had nothing to do with the sadness or the situation or anything. It had to do with that. I was afraid to be home. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's so true. It's like almost like admitting that, like, oh my God, I'm afraid of love right now, you know? And for some reason I don't want it. And I would rather be mad or sad for some reason. Right. So it's just, it's just a process of uh, letting go of that resistance. Vera Scroggins asks, um, I still can't get clear on the process of forgiveness that you use. So I guess, is there, could you, could you recap it for Vera? Thank okay, you. so the first thing you do is you identify that you're upset, and then you have to take that upset, you know, and, and I, again, I would also not analyze it, 
you can analyze it a tiny bit, but I mean, getting deep into analyzation will be the ego and <clears throat> you will be, uh, you can also say, I forgive it, you know, like magic wand, whoop, you know, um, but you will, I, I found that never works. <laughs> so, <laughs> so step one is identify your upset. Okay. Identify your upset. And then you take it to Holy Spirit or wh whatever higher presence you want to call it. But many people use Holy Spirit of Jesus. Okay. And then when you do that, you and you're letting go of yourself and you're you're going to be ready for an answer that is not anything you thought of. So you so take you it to, to the Holy Spirit. You take okay. it to the Holy Spirit. And you will know that you are there. And then you know that you're in Holy Spirit mind because it's completely all inclusive. And okay. if you're still thinking with yourself as a personality, there will be parts and there will be some things cordoned off and there'll be parts. And when you're in Holy Spirit mind, that's how you know that you're there. And so you're going to get yourself into the decision making mind where you can actually make a decision again between these two thought systems. Okay. And then you don't do anything else. You just look and you listen. So that's like the third part. So there has to be like, you recognize and then you take it to the Holy Spirit and that's like a surrendering process. Some people, there's another beautiful line in the course about putting it on the altar. Mm -hmm. And then like you step back, you don't keep holding on to the stuff you put up there. You let go, you know, yeah, and, and the altar is the mind. I asked, the altar is the mind. I asked that to Gary Renard once. I think I'm like, what's, what's the, when the course talks about bringing it to the altar, like what's the altar. And he said the mind. So it's like bringing the upset to the decision-making mind yes. and then just look, watching it and judging it, not. Yeah. And exactly. then it so seems like, like said, you get really peaceful after mind. that. Yeah. All there is is mine, but we do have to, we like these pictures. Pictures are helpful, you know, and, um, yeah. So if you want to think of as an altar, kind of a Christian, well, there's a lot of people use altars, a lot of different religions, whatever, but you know, yeah. Put that like an offering. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. an offering you do not take back, you leave it. And then you don't have any of yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's the very important part of it. And then that it, it takes a lot of a willingness actually to completely let go of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you're looking and you're waiting and you're judging that, it's like you have a very open, abstract mind, almost willing to get any answer. You're, in fact, you sometimes get so sick and tired of the way I've been thinking that I'm willing to hear anything. If I have to stand on my head in the corner, you know, for 12 hours to get in the Holy Spirit mind, I literally will do that. Of course, it's not necessary. But, you know, I mean, you get to that point where like anything, mm -hmm. yeah. anything than the way I've been thinking. Exactly. Okay. Christian Stanberry asks, what is the best way to be even more motivated to join with peace? Just a little quicker. Oh, you know, motivation <laughs> cannot be given by anyone. I, I really think it's on the timeline. You know, I could do a whole thing just on, on the script is written and the timeline. And what the heck are we doing here? You know, again, if we're only a mind and we're only looking with one thing or the other. I would maybe think of that maybe more often, but to actually get motivation, you know, what is it? Every mind will come to these awarenesses on its own, you know, so <clears throat> I can't do it for you. That's why no one could do it for me, you know, and, and, and no, outside people, you can't get it from outside. So that, oh, that willingness will come in time. That's about the best I could say. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I wish I had a better answer. Can't do it a little quicker. Sorry. Sorry, not no. sorry. Just kidding. Um, well, look, it took right. me, what, 27 years? Golly. I, I think I'm in the slow lane. <laughs> right? But, but time is an illusion anyway. So that's the, there is really no quicker because it never happened in the first place. So right. yeah, trust me. I want it. I want to finish all my forgiveness lessons ASAP too, Christian. I'm right there with you, bro. Um, Bernadette says your system is similar to that of Cindy Renard steps in true forgiveness. So. Yay. So somebody put her thing up on there and um, I was like, I'm purposely not going to listen to it because I bet we're the same. Ah, and I okay. think I figured we were the same. I just knew that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Janice Bowie says, bring it to the altar and let go of all one's judgments about it. Trust. We really haven't a clue and are wrong about the upset. 
Yeah, true. Yes. Christian says, as a body, eh. <laughs> Julia says, thank you, Sue Ann and Jared. I heard an ACIM teacher say sickness was a system of in fulfilled function. Could you say something to this? So sickness is a, wait, repeat that again. Oh, si uh, okay, okay, okay. Sick sickness is a symptom. I, Julia, it's kind of confusing. Can you retype the whole thing? Sorry. But she, I think it's like sickness is a, a symptom of like something, maybe I'm guessing the whole the ego thought system or something, but yeah. So, you know, and so sickness is in the mind. And I always try to bring things back really, really simple. Probably because I'm stupid or something. You know, so I need to be really, really okay, here simple. It is. Sim um, sickness is a system of unfulfilled function. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Yeah. And so um, things will come out in the body. You no, know, almost here. like. Uh, Can I say oh, it again? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Please. So I heard an ACIM teacher say that sickness is a symptom of unfulfilled function. Well, isn't the ego complete sickness, right? So thinking with the ego thought system is all of that. And it would come out in, you know, it could come out in illness, come out in mental illness and come out in all different ways and just unhappiness, you know, so that the whole the whole thought even to be separate is, um, is a sickness, right? Very well put. That's yeah. What and so, but like, um, then what would, what am I not fulfilling? You know, like if I'm having symptoms, I'm having sickness. And so what is it that I'm not fulfilling? And I, I personally, I love that it talks about, you know, that our function is forgiveness. Our function is to accept the tone for ourselves. Um, and again, I'm very much of a person to go back to the experience of things. So if I begin to think like, gosh, I'm supposed to be fulfilling some kind of function and I must not be. And then that's somehow how I got sick, you know, and you hear like, there's a lot of of guilt on myself about that. And, I, and I'm beating myself up and I'm kind of getting a, a spiral with that whole thought, you know? And so I would take that whole darn thing, you know, cause I felt things like that, you know? And I put that whole mixy mosh into, that's why I like that blob idea because in the blob you can put um, self hate, you could put depression, you could put people that died a long time ago, you could put people that haven't been born, you could put all sorts of things. It's even isn't just like a nasty email or your boss yelled at you or the shoelace broke or the flat tire or whatever. It could be even emotions. And that's probably like, so me, as I've been clearing things off, then it gets into like deeper, just emotions and then forgiving like all the friendship, forgiving what is it to be a wife, you know, and, and bigger, bigger things, right? So what I would say would be to put that and not even really almost analyze it. It's like, I'd be like, Holy spirit, you know, um, I think I'm supposed to have a function, but every time I think about a function, it's just so frustrating. I just don't even know where I'm going with that. You know, and I, I want to do these things and I'm going to put all that in there. And, and I have these illnesses and I have pain and I went through like 10 years of chronic pain, which I don't even hardly ever talk about, but um, that actually cleared up before, before I was doing some of this stuff with the course, but it was earlier on in the middle of there. So, you know, I put all that stuff in there and I would say, Holy Spirit, how do you see this? And, and that's what I do actually in that step with the looking is I ask him, how do you see this? And may I look through your eyes? I found that to be really, really effective. And then I actually then look through his eyes. And you'll see a lot of times when I'm doing videos, like I almost start closing my eyes. And I look back at my videos, like I keep closing my eyes. It's because I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm seeing in my mind, you know, and, and that's where we are. So that's where sight is, that's where vision is. And so um, to just be really, really simple with it and not analyze, just throw it all in there in a blob. Just, I'm sick of all this. <laughs> and, and a thing like that, if it's illness, uh, you know, it may take a thousand times of doing it. You know, Gary and I will talk about the slow burn, right? And, and so some things can be just like in a quick thing. 
sometimes it can take thousands. And sometimes I think I'm done. And then, oh, here's another one, you know? And then, the, the, so what happens is they bubble up. Uh, it, it almost seems as if like a, um, what do you call it? Um, I think of that beautiful uh, volcano in Hawaii, you know, it's kind of that slow ooze, right? So this just keeps coming and coming. Um, but then I did have a friend that was, I was talking to that we were afraid that like, then there's this ego backlash. <clears throat> the ego starts definitely not being your amigo. And then the ego is like, you know, you're no good. You don't deserve to be alive. And so you will get some really heavy duty stuff. But at the same time, it's almost like this teeter totter. So the Holy Spirit mind will start to become so real and you're so used to being there. It's like, it's like you're working on a muscle and you're doing something that, you know, just like any job you start or anything and you start getting used to it. And then you're, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm there. And that, that becomes more real than the glass block back here, more solid. And then you are able to work with ego. You don't really work with ego, but you just quit thinking with ego. And you go like, oh, I've seen you before. And you're always saying that. And it never was true. So you, you get that at the same time. I, that's important to talk about. And, um, <clears throat> but as, as these things come up, you know, it may take, you know, um, very deep things like what is a body? Why do I want to have a body? I mean, you forgive like very, very deep things that make up. I often talk about like a, a matrix that we hold, hold ourselves in with, with problems. So without problems, we don't have any of that. And so, and we are like relationship problems. We have like work problems. We have money problems. We have, you know, spiritual problems. I can't even do this course. Right. You know, <laughs> so even that, right. I can't read the book enough, you know? So we're like boxed ourselves all in and then we finally feel comfortable, but it's a yuck comfortable, right? It's something we've gotten used to. And so they, then these things will slowly, carefully in the time, and that also answers Christian's thing too. So this is a slow process, it's easy and gentle. So if you want to like forgive all your stuff like right now, I, I know people that have said, Holy Spirit, take it all, you know, like you will be blasted with like a blast of light <laughs> and you may become actually ill for a bit and you may not be able to handle it. I've known some people that have done some stuff like that. And it's like, it's much better to do it slow and easy. There's no rush. Where are we going? We're going to live through the script anyway, till the script, till this book is done, this chapter. So I'm in this yeah. chapter now I'm teaching. And then there's another chapter, another chapter, the final chapter, right? Great stuff. Well, can you believe it's the top of the hour? We got it. We go it. it was awesome. Time flies when you're having fun. And um, Sue Ann, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and, and being such a giver to our community on our Facebook group page with all the videos you make and um, now being our special guest. It is so awesome to see your commitment to your own process. And you, you inspire me so much because you put yourself out there, you contribute to people, you chat with people and you just love the course. And we, we love you and we're so proud of you. And we, we appreciate um, you, you sharing so much. And um, so thank you for that. And what is your uh, final piece of advice you'd like to give everyone tonight? Well, Holy Spirit was very glad to speak and let all this come out. And everyone will do this. It's a matter of time. We accept the atonement for ourselves. And you can accept for a little tiny seconds, you know, the holy instant. And then it will get longer and longer um, until it's like a pearl necklace and it doesn't end. And that would be enlightenment. I'm not there yet, but it will happen. That's right. Yes, it will happen for all of us. Well, thank you again, Sue Ann. And we're going to unmute the lines and everyone say, thank you, Sue Ann, and good night thank and you, God Sue bless. Ann. Thank you, Sue Thank you, thank you so much, Sue Ann. Thank, thank you so much, Sue Ann. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue Ann. So we're going to see you tomorrow, right? Yes, yes, tomorrow. Sorry, tomorrow, noon central. Again, we're going to do it again. Excellent. Round two. Woo! <laughs> Are Good we doing here. an after party or are we going to go eat? We're going to go eat, but I'm going to call you right now. Okay. Thank you, Sue Ann. All right. Thank bye you. Bye, everybody. Peace.